Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Allie Jeter. And I'm Rob Riches. Here's your news now. The Cabrini Steppers second, second Annual Step Show was held on Thursday, April 26th. Let's see what went down. The Cabrini Steppers hosted their second annual step show on Thursday, April 26th at the Dixon Center. Various faculty and staff, including Executive Chef Rodney Stockett and Dr. Jeff Gingrich, Dean of Academic Affairs, danced along with the step team. The Norristown High School Elegant Steppers and Eastern University Blaze Step Team were also special guests who performed. Tonight was a success and fun for everybody in attendance. For Location News, I'm Rob Riches. Back to the news desk. If you could get your wish, what would you change about Cabrini over the summer? Let's hear what some students had to say. selection of classes in the science majors like different anatomy and exercise science classes. Changes I'd like to see on campus is uh, better food because the food here is quite terrible. Um, next year I'm looking to see the food the cafeteria change. <laughs> changes I'd like to see next semester would be better parking. More parking around the campus. I want to see more parking for what's in the apartments because I can never ever find a parking spot there. I don't want the gym to stay open later. Probably just activities on the weekend for fun ones. With finals coming up, we sat down with Dr. Filling to get some tips on how to get through the last week of classes. Um, I'm Dr. Michelle Filling and I teach in the English department and I'm also the coordinator of the Engagements with the Common Good series and also director of the Realizing Dreams Living and Learning community. Is first of all, you have to get lots of sleep. And I know that's really hard this time of year because everyone is up late working on papers and projects, but you need to make sure you get sleep because you won't be able to function and do well in your exams if you're not well rested. You know, you need to make sure that you're obviously not cramming and start studying now as opposed to the night before your exam. Um, you know, our brains don't function cramming everything in at the last minute. That's why, you know, we don't have, you know, English class for three weeks and then science class for three weeks. It's like our brain needs to use different parts of our brain and take breaks. So, you know, take a chunk of time and study for one exam and then take another chunk of time and study for something else so that you're going back and forth and then go back and review what you studied, you know, in the first thing that you, you looked at that day. You know, all the sort of tips that you've heard over the years of, you know, flashcards and, um, you know, mnemonic devices and things that help you really remember. Think about what kind of learner you are. So I'm a really visual learner, so I like to draw diagrams and study, you know, pictures. But if you're someone who's an auditory learner, think about reading things aloud or studying with a partner and having them read things aloud to you. Use all the resources that are available to you on campus. Of course, there's a Center for Teaching and Learning, and there are lots of tutors there for every subject and the Writing Center for help with papers.
If you're leaving Radnor for the summer, here's your last chance to enjoy local events. The Wayne Art Center on Maplewood Avenue, which hosts a number of events and classes, will be joined by Chef Chiwishi Joy Abney this May. The chef will be holding a series of culinary classes for friends and families, including Italian favorites, on-the-grill meals, and donuts. The price per class is $50 for two people. The Tribeca Film Festival is making its way from New York to Philly. Four films that premiered at the film festival, co-founded by Robert De Niro, will play for free at the Trocadero Theater next week, courtesy of the Awesome Fest. Their goal is to bring the best of the best of independent films to Philly. The screening will be the first time Tribeca Films ventures out of Lower Manhattan, so don't miss your chance to see the variety of films. The Awesome Fest hopes to expand this summer by hosting outdoor screenings all around the city. And listen up, Karini students. Unfortunately, you may have something to worry about this summer. Millions of college students may be affected if the interest rate on a federally subsidized Stafford loans doubles. The rates are scheduled to double by July 1st from around 3% to 7%. Unless Congress votes to push the date back, about 7 million undergraduates can expect costs to raise an average of $1,000 each. And that was your trip around the block. Now here's Rob for the news from across the nation. The White House recently explained the controversial drone strikes used to kill members of Al-Qaeda. Drones are used to send precise strikes without the need for actual military action. President Obama's counterterrorism advisor, John Brennan, said the strikes were helping to win the war. The strikes are aimed at militants in Afghanistan and Pakistan, but have caused much controversy since they've accidentally killed hundreds of civilians and even several U.S. soldiers. The comments come in the week marking a year since Osama bin Laden's death. Mr. Brennan also said that documents and Osama's handwritten diary found at the compound where he was killed in Pakistan last year are expected to go online later this week. Five men were arrested earlier this week after allegedly conspiring to blow up a bridge near Cleveland, Ohio. Their initial plan was to, quote, topple financial institution signs atop high-rise buildings. Their plots ramped up a level after they bought two activated C4-based explosive devices from undercover FBI agents, which they then planted at a bridge that carries a four-lane highway. Fortunately, the explosive bought from the FBI agents were inert and no one was hurt. May Day demonstrations took place across the country for the Occupy Movement General Strike, also known as International Workers' Day. Protests and marches took place in more than 125 cities. The main message Occupy protesters are still trying to get across is the influence of money and power on politics. However, whether or not Occupy will have a major influence on this year's election still remains up in the air. Some protesters believe that because of the number of diverse groups within different goals, Occupy has become confusing to politicians running for office and in the upcoming year, less people are less likely to participate in the movement. That was your news across the nation. Now let's go around the world with Allie. German officials uncovered vital Al-Qaeda documents on a doc digital storage device and memory cards earlier this week. Buried inside them were important documents encoded as pornography. After strenuous efforts to crack a password, more than 100 Al-Qaeda documents were found, including details on the terror group's most terrifying attacks and plans for future operations. U.S. intelligence sources told CNN that the documents uncovered are pure gold, since they show future plans to attack cruise ships. Investigators continue to search for all the authors and participants connected with the documents. The tra a tragedy took place in central Somalia, Africa, earlier this week when a suicide bomber killed seven people, including two members of parliament. According to BBC News, the attacks targeted a group of about 20 politicians at an outdoor cafe. Several other MPs and politicians were injured, while two security guards and two civilians were killed. The Islamist militant group, Al-Shabaab, which controls much of the country, said it was behind the attack. Canadians are making a racket about a mysterious hum coming from the United States border. A senior aide to Canada's foreign minister was dispatched to Detroit on a diplomatic mission to stop the noise. According to BBC News, the hum is heard throughout the town of Windsor, across from Detroit, and is described as a low-frequency rumbling sound, which rattles windows and shakes houses. Residents in Windsor reported many incidences linked to the hum, such as illnesses and erratic behavior in their pets. However, Americans cannot seem to hear the noise. 
Scientists believe the hum is coming from an industrial zone in Michigan. The Canadian government is taking the issue seriously and insists there will be a solution soon. That was your trip around the world. Let's go to Greg with this week's tech report. Hey everyone. It has been reported recently that Apple is now working with Dropbox on rejected apps. Developers using Dropbox's SDK find their apps being rejected by the App Store. This is apparently because they contain links to external purchasing options. In other news, Boeing, after more than six years in the making, has finally delivered on the first next-gen 747 plane. Boeing revealed the plane over a year ago, but it's been in testing since. The new S47s puts any other first class to shame, and is the next best thing from owning a private plane. On May 1st, they released the first plane to La Panza. That's all the tech news I have for you. Have a great summer, Cabrini. Let's go to Mary Kate for this week's sports update. The league announced that the Cabrini College softball team received eight all CSAC honors. The season for the Lady Cavs reached an end as they were swept in the regular season final against Baptist Bible College in a doubleheader last Saturday. The Cavaliers finished the 2012 campaign 17-23 overall and in the CSAC. Senior Chris Avardi paired a 78-75 for the lowest score at the CSAC Golf Championship this past Friday. The Cavaliers finished the CSAC championship in sixth place with a team score of 679. The Cabrini College men's lacrosse team defeated the Cyclones 18-3 in the CSAC semifinal on Tuesday night. The win advances the Cavaliers to the championship game for the 13th straight season, where they'll play for the CSAC plaque Saturday, May 5th. The 4-1 loss at home on Tuesday, May 1st, was truly shocking for the Flyers. Fans were left disappointed and booed as the Flyers left the ice. The New Jersey Devils deserve this upsetting defeat against the Philadelphia Flyers. The series, now tied at one apiece, will continue on Thursday. On a positive note, the Philadelphia 76ers beat Chicago 109-92 on Tuesday night. Holiday was 11 of 15 from the field, and the Sixers shot 59% overall. The Sixers look to take the series lead on Friday in Philadelphia. Thanks for following Location Sports updates this year. Continue to cheer for your favorite teams and enjoy your summer vacation. Now back to Rob and Allie. Now let's go to Felicia with your entertainment news. Hey guys, it's Felicia here with your entertainment news. Jessica Simpson gave birth to her first child on May 1st. She named the baby Maxwell Drew Johnson and called this experience the greatest moment of her life. Kanye West suffered an all-time low when he stepped out with his new girl, Kim Kardashian. The rap star fell victim to a wardrobe malfunction when his pants fell down revealing his black briefs and some thigh action. Kim didn't seem to notice that his pants were falling as she walked in, in front of him smiling for the paparazzi. And finally, the action-packed trailer for the film The Dark Knight Rises has been released. The film stars Christian Bale, Anne Hathaway, and Morgan Freeman. The film is set to release July 20th. Well, that's all I have for your entertainment news. It has been a pleasure keeping you guys updated on the latest entertainment news this semester. Have a great summer, Cabrini. Thanks for staying tuned in with us this week. For Location Weekly News, I'm Allie Jeter. And I'm Rob Richards. Thank you for tuning in for this season of Location. Hope you had as much fun as I did. Have a great summer, Cabrini, and we will see you back here in the fall.